dead batteries, no working generator, and the engine light is on. Are there too many issues in this inspection? Hi everyone, it's Deb from Deb's RV Services and welcome to today's inspection. It's a 2015 Winnebago Sonova. So I can already see that I have some issues right from the get-go with some dead batteries. So the dealership salesperson said the techs are going to be replacing those batteries for me while I'm here, but let's see what else I find. Stay tuned. I'm looking at the slide here and I'm looking to see that the sweeps are extracted and they are not. On this side, it goes all the way up to the top. So that can lead to water intrusion. On the other side of the slide, it was at the very top of it, you can see where the sweep was tucked in. Look along the lower right hand corner of this window. You can see the seal is starting to come out. That can happen over time and with sun exposure to windows. Sidewall sealant is something that you want to have maintained regularly. A lot of people aren't aware of this, but look at all the cracking here. This can lead to water damage inside the RV. I see this frequently in my inspections and it's something that is really important for preventative maintenance. I can see here there's some scrapes and some dings along the sidewall, so I'm not sure what happened here. Possibly some kind of accident. But what I do in my report is I just notate it that, you know, what I found and I send pictures to my client. This was interesting. We found that in order to access the water heater, you had to take bolts out and pull up part of the sidewall to get in there. Water was gushing out from it, and we found out that the drain plug was not in properly. I went to test the levelers, and it had an error code, and it said that it needed service. One of the services that I offer is a fluid analysis. So here I'm testing the fluid for the generator. So my client requested that they get the generator and the engine oil tested. So I went ahead, I extracted that, and then I, um, I worked on the engine part, and then I send these off to the lab. But I want you to notice the color difference between the two. They're both oils, but look at the color difference. Interesting. Okay, so I finished the outside. Now it's time for the inside. But I need to contact my salesman because he did not, the text did not hook up the water for me, so I can't access anything with the water. They still haven't changed out the batteries. So as of right now, there are no working batteries on this coach. I'm hooked up to shore power and I can hook up to the generator, but I cannot actually test the batteries themselves. So stay tuned, we'll see what happens. Here's a little overview of the inside of the coach. Looks nice. I like the layout. It was nice and clean. Just wanted to give you guys kind of a, a look of what it looked like on the inside. So I went to turn on the engine and it wouldn't start, so we had to have it jumped. And then I saw that the engine light was on, so it needs um, to be looked at by an auto technician. And then turned on the wipers and they just kind of folded up and got stuck in that position there. So all those things get noted in my report. So this is something that I find frequently when I'm inspecting too. Look at the wallpaper, how it crinkles, which makes you think there's been water damage. Now I, I feel the area and make sure that there are no soft spots. I didn't find any soft spots. But this crinkled wallpaper was all around the windows and slides, which makes me think there was some kind of water that got to that area at some point. I'm not sure. It could be humidity and it could be a leak, but I didn't find any soft spots. So the only thing I can do is tell my client what I find. This area here has um, a trim piece that's just kind of coming off. So I take a picture of that and put it in my report. So this is a shade that I found that when I pulled it down, it was frayed along the edges. And then the bottom part where you pull it up and down, 
was a broken piece of wood that had been shoved in there. I was testing the refrigerator on propane and I got an error code of no flow. Checked out the smoke detector and the propane detector and both were out of date. They need to be replaced. I was testing the air conditioner and it would not work in the bedroom. It did work in the front area, but I could not get the air conditioner to turn on in the bedroom. Okay, everyone, I'm done with the inspection for today. So tell me what you think in the comments. I'm really curious. So there was a lot going on with this RV today, you know, with not having the batteries hooked up in the beginning. So that really affects a lot of different things. I was not able to turn on the generator because I didn't have the 12 volt to the battery. And so there's a lot of things that are affected if the dealership doesn't have everything prepared for you. And I always give in my contract, I always give a full sheet explanation of everything that I need so that I can do the, the inspection properly. So there's a lot going on today, but um, curious what you think. Let me know, like, and subscribe and be prepared to get out there.